Patrick, New Jersey is one of the most diverse states in the nation. So why are our schools so segregated and how significant is the problem? Yeah, um, the schools are very segregated. Uh, in terms of black students, it's the sixth most segregated state. And for Latino students, it's the seventh. And what the plaintiffs in this lawsuit are arguing is that the cause of that in large part stems from a state law that makes students uh, go to school where they live. And because our towns and cities are so segregated, that means our schools are going to be too. And so they're really pushing for a pretty sweeping change to how students are assigned to schools that could lead to um, big changes and hopefully the plaintiffs hope uh, some desegregation. So, so what is the argument from plaintiffs exactly who are, who are being harmed by this and how are they being affected? Yeah, the plaintiffs pull on state uh, data that show nearly two thirds of black and Latino students go to schools that are more than 75% non-white. So a large percentage of those students are going to schools that are racially segregated. And they are arguing the plaintiffs that it's state policies that contribute to that. And so the state is responsible for making changes to desegregate those schools. And so they, what they want is the judge to rule that the state is liable. And then that would move this case to the next phase, which would be about the remedies. That is the ways to change the school uh, system so that they start to desegregate. Well, just touching on that, point you know the the murphy administration has been battling and delaying this lawsuit since it's, it was filed in 2018 so how did the state's attorneys respond today yeah so the attorneys kind of um repeated the arguments they made in filings which is that they question whether the data that the plaintiffs provided whether it really shows that segregation is statewide or if it's just in some districts um and they also um they they said that um that there could be different ways of measuring segregation. But I think the, the key argument that the plaintiffs really um, latch onto is that the state says, even if some schools are segregated, that doesn't necessarily mean that students aren't getting a quality education. And that seemed to really almost offend the plaintiffs who argued that that's, that's the same as saying that separate can be equal, which the Supreme Court ruled almost 70 years ago in the Brown v. Board of Education case that separate cannot be equal in education. And so the attorney actually for the uh, plaintiffs today, he at one point said he was a little bit less proud to be a New Jerseyan because the state was uh, making that argument and, and so forcefully uh, resisting this call to integrate schools. Some lawmakers have proposed legislative fixes. Could that be effective, Patrick? I think, you know, it could. There are definitely the plaintiffs say that there are programs that already exist, magnet schools, uh, programs that let students transfer to other districts that could help with integration. I think the question is whether there would be enough support in the legislature to really push this, um, because we know that there are a lot of people that have questions uh, about integration, desegregation, what that would mean for them. And so that was partly why the plaintiffs and the advocates behind it filed this lawsuit was so that they could get around the politics and have a court order that would kind of force the hand of the governor and the legislature. And so I think without that court order, it would be somewhat less likely that I think we would see any big changes. Just still shocking that in one of the most diverse states that this is a problem. Patrick Wall, thank you so much for your time and speaking with me. Thank you.